Hello everyone, this is Andrew again and welcome to our PLC Programming Training for Beginner Part 4. Okay, let's start. First, we have our exercise 1. Create a PLC program given the following condition. You have one push button, one selector switch, and two lumps. Then, if PB1 is pressed while selector switch is off, then lamp 1 will turn on. Lamp 1 will remain turned on unless selector switch is on. If PB1 is pressed while the selector switch is on, then lamp 2 will turn on. Lamp 2 will remain turned on unless selector switch turns off. Okay, let's have our demo. Let's press PB1. Then the lamp remains turned on. Now this lamp will not turn off unless we turn on the selector switch okay next let's press PB1 again lamp 2 turns on then lamp 2 will remain turned on lamp 2 will not turn off unless we turn off the selector switch now I want you to post this video and try to do it by yourself then, you can resume this video to compare your answer to my answer. Okay, let's continue. This is my answer for our exercise 1. Okay, let's press PB1. As you can see here in our ladder diagram, there's a latching. That's why lamp 1 remains turned on. And now to turn it off, we need to turn on the selector switch here. Now, let's press PB1. And as you can see, there's a latching here also. And that's why lamp 2 remains turned on. And to turn off lamp 2, we need to turn off the selector switch. And that's how we solve exercise 1. Exercise 2. Create a PLC program given the following condition. You have three push buttons, one selector switch, and one lamp. If selector switch is on, both PB1 and PB2 is required to turn on the lamp. The lamp will remain on. If selector switch is off, either PB1 or PB2 can be used to turn on the lamp. The lamp will remain on. The lamp will turn off if PB3 is pressed. Now our selector switch is off. Now let's press PB1. Lamp will turn on. Then let's press PB3. Lamp will turn off. Let's press PB2. The lamp will turn on also. Then let's press PB3 again. The lamp will turn off. Now let's press both PB1 and PB2. Lamp 1 will turn on. When we press PB3 again, Lamp 3 will turn off. Then, let's turn on the selector switch. Right now, PB1 and PB2 is now required to turn on the switch. Let's press PB1. Nothing happened. Now, let's press PB2. Nothing happened also. But when we press both push button, lamp 1 will turn on. And to turn it off, we need to press PB3. And now, I want you to post this video and try to solve this problem by yourself. Then, you can resume this video so that you can compare your answer to mine. Okay, let's continue. Now, this is my answer to this problem. Now, the selector switch is off. When we press PB1, lamp will turn on. When we press PB3, lamp will turn off. When we press PB2, lamp will turn on again. When we press PB3 again, lamp will turn off again. Now, let's turn on the selector switch. When we press PB1, Nothing will happen. When we press PB2, 
nothing will happen also. Now when we press both push button, lamp 1 will turn on. And to turn it off, we need to press PB3. And that's how we solve exercise 2. Now let's go to our next exercise. Exercise 3. Create a PLC program given the following conditions. You have three push buttons, one selector switch, and one lock. If PB1 is pressed, the lamp will turn on. The lamp will remain turned on even if PB1 is released. The lamp will turn off if selector switch is off and PB2 is pressed. Lamp will turn off if selector switch is on and PB3 is pressed. As you can see on this problem, PB1 is the only button that you can use to turn on the lamp. And there are two push buttons that you can use to turn it off, depending on the status of the selector switch. Then now, let's have our demonstration. Let's press PB1. Lamp 1 will turn on. Then, because our selector switch is off, if we press PB3, nothing will happen. But when we press PB2, lamp will turn off. Then, let's turn on the selector switch. Let's press PB1. Lamp will turn on. When we press PB2, nothing will happen because our selector switch is now on. We need to press PB3 to turn it off. And that's it. Now I want you to post this video and try to solve it by yourself first. Then you can resume this video to compare your answer to mine. Okay, let's continue. This is my answer for this exercise. Okay, let's press PB1. Lamp will turn on. Then let's press PB3. Nothing will happen. Then let's press PB2. Lamp will turn off. Now let's turn on the selector switch. Let's press PB1. Lamp will turn on. Then let's press PB2. Nothing will happen. Now let's press PB3. The lamp will turn off. Now let's have exercise 4. Create a PLC program given the following condition. You have 4 push buttons, 1 selector switch, and 1 lamp. If selector switch is off, the lamp can only turn on by pressing PB3 and it can only turn off by pressing PB4. If selector switch is on, the lamp can only turn on by pressing PB1 and it can only turn off by pressing PB2. Now let's have our demo. Let's turn on selector switch. Let's press PB1. Lamp will turn on. Let's press PB3. Nothing will happen. Let's press PB4. Nothing will happen also. Then let's press PB2. Lamp will turn off. Then let's turn off the selector switch. Let's press PB1. Nothing will happen. Let's press PB3. Lamp 1 will turn on. Then let's press PB2. Nothing will happen. Then let's press PB4. The lamp turns off. Now let's press PB3 again. The lamp will turn on. Then let's try to turn on the selector switch. Let's press PB4. Nothing will happen. But when we press PB2, lamp 1 will turn off. As you can see on this problem, the requirement to turn on and to turn off the lamp changes depending on the status of the selector switch. Okay, I want you to post this video first and try to solve it by yourself. Then after that, you can resume this video to compare your answer to mine. Okay, let's continue. This will be my answer to this problem. Let's turn on the selector switch. When I press PB1, lamp 1 will turn on. When I press PB3, nothing will happen. 
when I press PB4, nothing will happen also. But when I press PB2, lamp 1 will turn off. Now, let's turn off the selector switch. When I press PB1, nothing will happen. When I press PB3, lamp 1 will turn on. Then, when I press PB2, nothing will happen. When I press PB4, lamp 1 will turn off. Then, let's press PB3 again. Lamp 1 will turn on again. Now, let's turn on the selector switch. Then, let's press PB4. Nothing will happen. Then, let's press PB2. The lamp will turn off. And that's how we solve exercise 4. Okay, let's go to our exercise 5. Create a PLC program given the following condition. You have two push buttons, one selector switch, and one lamp. The lamp will turn on if selector switch is off and PB1 is pressed. The lamp will not turn off unless the selector switch turns on. The lamp will turn on if selector switch is on and PB2 is pressed. The lamp will not turn off unless selector switch turns off. Then, let's have our demonstration. Let's press PB2. Nothing will happen. Now, let's press PB1. Lamp 1 turns on. To turn off the lamp, we need to turn on the selector switch. And now, let's press PB1. Nothing happened. Now, let's press PB2. Lamp 1 turns on. Now, to turn off the lamp, we need to turn off the selector switch. Okay? Now, I want you to post this video and try to solve it by yourself first. And after that, you can resume the video so that you can compare your answer to my answer. Okay, let's continue. This is my answer to exercise 5. Okay, let's press PB2. Nothing happened. Now, let's press PB1. Lamp 1 turns on. Now, to turn off the lamp, we need to turn on the selector switch. Now, let's press PB1. Nothing happened. Let's press PB2. Lamp turns on. Then, to turn it off, we need to turn off the selector switch. And that's how we solve exercise 5. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. And that's it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please click the notification bell to notify you for new video. Please uh, like and share my YouTube videos. And please like my Facebook page, the Gizgon Mechatronics Engineering Skills Tips, Tricks, and Learning. And please click see first on Facebook to notify you for new posts. And uh, thank you again. See you next time.